NFL Week 7 predictions are upon us. I'm going to add some college football. Last week, I added Notre Dame Moneyline, the game of the century. That was a game everybody was watching. Most people had USC, the hype Caleb Williams. Mr. Williams that wants a piece of equity and ownership from any NFL teams that draft him. Who the fuck do you think you are, man? You're a college kid and you're demanding somebody to give you equity? I think Aaron Rodgers did that with the Jets, but it's Aaron Rodgers at the very least. Caleb Williams asking for a piece of equity in a team? Bro, the entitlement. If I saw him, I'd be like, bro, who the fuck do you think you are? But that's not the point of this episode. We're going to talk about some football, some winners, and I'm going to give you guys more college football plays. And here's why. I'm 7-1 and one over my last eight college football plays, but I'm 4-4 four and four over my last NFL plays. I've won the last five weeks. I've won the last five months. But NFL has started a bit shaky. I'm a man enough to admit that, but we always improve as the season goes on. And at the end of the year, we always profit with NFL. With that said, we got to know where we stand. We got to know what we're doing. And college football, I'm really good at. But before we do start off, let's give a huge hello to my partner in crime here, Salim. How you doing, brother? What's up, man? What's up? Excited to be here once again. Got some fantasy news for the guys. Let's fucking get it. Some fantasy news before I do get started but with the picks, the predictions, and all that. One to give you guys a huge heads up right here that number one the dolphins are gonna lose this week <laughs> i always like to focus on the dolphins fan but we'll get into that game that's a very interesting matchup man Phillies just come from losing the game they're in philadelphia dolphins on a high horse five and one best start since 2002 i believe so it's gonna be an interesting matchup man i'm, I'm gonna break it down for you guys you guys probably can feel where i'm going with this already but let's save it for that side of things with nfl let's start with saturday man the game of the week the game of the century the game that everybody's waiting for and it's penn state against ohio state at ohio state both undefeated teams both top 10 ranked and right here is where i'm telling you guys that this is another example of what defense does ohio state's defense tops probably top 10 or top five in red zone defense their offense has been clicking, they're playing home, and they're ranked third. They're facing a Penn State team that's on a high horse too, but their quarterback is rather new. There's a lot of unknowns. Typically, in this matchup, if you guys look back at it, Ohio State has dominated Penn State. If I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, put it in the comments, they've won the last six. And out of the last 11, they've won, I believe, 10 or 9. Ohio State dominates this matchup, especially at home. They have a better offense. The point spread is at 4. It opened at 4, pushed to 4.5. Now it's at 5.5 Ohio State with majority of the favor leaning on Penn State because Penn State's they're a threat they're a good team I'm not saying they're not but now they're facing a real test and it's their biggest test of the season it's the biggest test of the quarterback season and it's an environment where I fully believe he's gonna make mistakes it happens they're 18 19 20 year olds in Ohio give me Ohio State minus five minus six I wouldn't buy it to seven if it gets to seven I believe it'll stay within the five and six range I believe by the weekend they'll probably hit six but it'll most likely stay within the five and a half, which is most likely accurate. At five and a half, I take it. At six, I'll take it. If you guys don't know my rules, how I kind of work. When I see a line at seven, especially Vegas puts out a line at seven. Typically, if you guys bet, you guys know Vegas is pretty on point with the spread. With that said, I typically like to buy the hook at six and a half. Or if it's at seven and a half, I buy it at seven because three and seven are key numbers in football. If you guys look at history, that's majority of the time what teams lose by or win by. Three, seven, 14, 10. And here and there, you got the odds numbers that don't make sense but safeties and all that shit have ohio state is actually a very big play for me it'll be a five thousand dollar max play that will be the eight and one in the process for my college football plays over the last nine so lock it up that's a play you guys will see in my profile posted as a play with a nice little check mark ohio state minus five minus five and a half and we continue to game number two but before we do what do you think about that game salo slamming it man that's it you sold me i was actually like damn man maybe he's talking about the defense for penn state manny diaz and all this and no. you, that's it bro you sold me I, yeah, I'm yeah, slamming. yeah. <laughs> no look it's gonna be a great game i think it'll get start when it starts off it'll be a tight game but i believe by the third fourth quarter ohio state will be fully in control and they'll win by a touchdown but i believe that penn state is gonna make a late push maybe to make it by seven when they're down by 14 or 15 points the whole game you know what i mean it's gonna yeah, look like it's a lot closer than when it really is but ohio state's ohio state i'm not huge on their quarterback but their team is solid their defense is stingy as hell if you look at penn state's defense man again if i'm not mistaken here which i'm 
most likely not they've allowed a field goal in every red zone defense that they've faced so every time the opponent gets to the red zone at a very minimum they've allowed three points every fucking time what does that tell you about the red zone defense majority of the time has been touchdown suit now you face an ohio state team that ranks top five in red zone defense and doesn't allow too many points that's why the spreads like that guys and don't fall for the trap of taking penn state as a trendy dog and money line and all that shit vegas is laying a trap for you guys maybe not a trap but most people i would believe they're taking penn state but let's move on from that game i'm gonna go on to two more games i'll cover them quickly i'm not too sure if i'm gonna take them just yet but they are in my radar the first one is fsu i don't touch fsu they're my team but i do like them against duke at minus 14 and a half I really do. I think Duke is a team that's playing well. They're up and coming. Their quarterback is good. They're building a culture. I don't take anything away from that. But you're playing Florida State, which is arguably one of the best teams right now in the state, in the nation. Their quarterback is balling. Their offense looks unreal. They look almost NFL. Their wide receivers are fucking huge. Florida State minus 14 and a half. I'm keeping an eye on it. And then the last one is USC Utah. USC minus seven bounce back spot after last week against Utah. Now, what you guys are most likely thinking is like, hey, oh, Utah has good defense. So does Notre Dame. Why are you taking USC minus seven if it's the same situation? It's not the same fucking situation at all. USC is at home. They just lost. And Utah's defense is not compared to Notre Dame's at Notre Dame. Those are the leans. If you guys aren't in my free telegram, I highly suggest you join it. It's in the link below. I typically confirm the plays that I'm saying here the day of. So I'll let you guys know if I'm really going to take them or not. The best way to figure that out is to be in my telegram chat. We just hit 1,400 subscribers. Subscribers. We've been winning there. It's growing. The people are loving it. You guys are loving these videos too. I know you guys are sharing them and commenting. The views are growing. So I highly appreciate that. Just a little thank you to everybody that catches this show. It means a lot, especially if you share it, because that's the only way I grow it. I don't run ads to this shit. I find it annoying when I'm watching a fucking video and an ad pops out on YouTube saying to buy some sort of product. That's annoying, so I don't do that. It's all based on value exchange. So if you guys have been winning or you find some of the things I'm saying valuable, please share the show. Now, let's move on to NFL Sunday. NFL, oh. NFL Sunday. Before I do start, I do have a really good play I'm going to give you guys here. I promise it's going to hit. I promise you guys this time it's going to hit. I've done my homework well enough to fucking hit this play. I don't lose too often back to back to back. And NFL, I have a chip on my shoulder with NFL. To the point where I've studied NFL for the past week, every single day for an hour or so. Just to see what's going on. When you're in business, this is my business. Not all sunshines and rainbows, guys. Sometimes shit goes wrong. But most people fucking flake and they decide to give up or they decide to chase or they decide to get greedy whenever that shit happens me on the other hand i like to take a step back and see what's going on what am i missing and i compare it to previous years and so on but enough of that let's start with game number one which i think it's a game of the week lions ravens what do you think about that salim lions ravens man i like the ravens bro i feel like everybody's putting them down i feel like everybody's counting them out Lions, in my eyes, still have a lot to prove. I feel like there's a lot of hype. They're doing great. Don't get me wrong. They're doing um, you know, fantastic. They turned... Dan Campbell's a great coach, but... Yeah, yeah they, they turned it around. But I feel like I'll never count Lamar Jackson out, Mark Andrews, Zay Flowers, OBJ. Like, those guys are legit. And they're legit. They're a great team. They could easily be 6-0. Little mistakes. That's the game I want to touch on. And that's a game that I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to take just yet, guys. But it's a game that I'm leading towards the Ravens. And it'd be money line. I would not take them plus three. I do believe Justin Tucker kicks the game-winning field goal that game. That's the type of game it's going to be. It's going to be a 21-24 type game. 18-21. to It's going to be that type of game. It's going to be tight. Most people think that the Lions are going to come out and play the same type of offense that they've been doing all year and blowing out teams. Playing in Baltimore, guys. They're playing against Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson's been a little undervalued this season. I feel like with everything that happened over the offseason with his contract and stuff, it's been shaky, but he has a chip on his shoulder and he's a beast at the end of the day. And you know it. And you guys all know it. Their running game has been a little iffy, but they still got Lamar Jackson. Mark Andrews has probably been their most steady catcher. He's a fucking beast. And their defense is great. I think it's a spot where Lions have been in the road for back-to-back -back games. Going to Baltimore. It's going to be a tough environment. I do see this as an upset spot for the Ravens to win. Everybody's on the Lions. The Lions are the team that everybody's thinking that they're going to make the Super Bowl because they're 5-1. and one. They're building something special. Do not get me wrong. I just don't know if they're just yet. Yep. Super Bowl contenders take years. Just like NBA championship contenders take years. Look at Denver. It took him years to build that team and win. Look at Golden State. There's a plenty of examples with that. And I believe they're in that stage. They're getting good. And maybe in the next two, three years, they'll get there. 
year. But this year, there's still a lot of unknowns. They still have to prove themselves, especially a game like this one. I'm leaning with the team that has dominated this matchup over the last years. Baltimore at Baltimore. Lions heading to their third matchup away. I know Baltimore just came from London and all the above, but they're coming home. But Baltimore is my play there. The line opened up at two and a half, pushed up to three. Majority of the favor on the Lions. Guys, I've gone over this. Those are little signs. Why is the line pushing up when majority of the favor is the other side? Why? And especially, why is it hitting such a key number three when it opened at two and a half? If those aren't questions you're asking yourself when you're analyzing plays, then you probably start doing that because it's going to help you. A little break right here. One way that has really benefited me throughout my years of sports betting, sports investing, and what's helped me really get better has been tracking my plays and putting a reasoning behind why I took those plays. And that's the importance of having a good tracker that where you're posting your place, it gives you your ROI, your bet per unit, your percentages for each league. And with that said, I created one that I'm giving out for free. Anybody that's listening to this, you can click the link below. It says Pro Tracker. Put your email and you can download it for free. I will guarantee you guys will start winning more of your picks just by doing that. With that said, let's go on to my favorite fucking game of the day. And it's the one. It's the one and only, my brother. It's the fucking Tilapias <laughs> against the Eagles. It's the fucking <laughs> Eagles coming in and destroying the Dolphins. This is going to happen, guys, and I'm very excited for this one. Is it going to be a play? I don't know, because I told you guys a couple weeks ago I was going to bet against the Dolphins because they've been biting me in the ass. But now you're going to Philadelphia. Now you're going to Jalen Hurts home, the push and tush. They're going to push and tush the shit out of the Dolphins, dog. That's exactly what's going to happen. No, but in all seriousness, man, this is my angle, guys. It's not just because I dislike the Dolphins. I thought I like the Dolphins. I'm from Miami. This is Miami. But he hates the fucking Dolphins. I don't, like, I don't hate the Dolphins. I just don't fully believe in them as much as most do. And here's why. What happened against the Bills? Yo. It's the same Dude. matchup right here. That defense is going to fucking put pressure on Tua. And Tua's not going to know what to do. And Tua's going to fold. And man, I'd take Philadelphia Eagles minus fucking 10 if I could. But I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'd take a money line. Minus two and a half. I want to see how that point spread moves up or down. But guys, Philadelphia is a play there. Buy a low spot after a shitty loss last week. First loss of the season. Dolphins on a high. Again, five and one. Best record since 2002. All of the above. I do like Philly in this spot. I might be wrong. I don't know. Guys, I'll let you guys know. Definitely be on my Telegram because I'll definitely give you guys a lean for it if I don't take it. I really like this game. It's a primetime game. And I don't know. Salim, what do you think about that game? I know you're a Dolphins fan. Bro, so believe it or not, I'm a Dolphins fan. Oh, you're a Dolphins fan. You know, I was talking it over with some friends and everybody's like, man, the Dolphins so good. And bro, they haven't shown shit. They haven't proved anything. All they've done is beat on shitty ass teams. So me, as a Dolphins fan, this one for me is important because I'm gonna see if they're real time right now. If they win, okay, now I can take them serious. But if they don't, then who have they beaten, right? Like the fucking Giants, the, the, ah, Pats, the Cowboys, the bro. Mac Jones fucking eating shit, down 14 points against the Panthers, come back and blow them out. Yo, you can't do those little things against the Eagles. The Eagles are gonna fucking destroy you if you come out sleeping like that. So I'm excited for the game. I actually, I'll stay away. You like the Eagles? Don't stay away unless I send a play. Like, if you send a play, <laughs> rules, man. Fucking slam city, bud. Fucking <laughs> slam Philly, dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, I agree with you there. I'm with you 100%. I hope the Dolphins can do something this season. But this is a test, man. Just like the Bills will be and just like future matchups will be, will determine. Like, these are the games you have to win. Yep. Beating the Panthers doesn't mean anything, man. Beating the Giants, bro, Denver, like, that's not impressive. Now you go to Philadelphia and beat them. Now we're talking. You go to Buffalo and beat Buffalo and Buffalo. Now we're talking. Exactly. Till then, we really can't say anything. Just like the Dallas Cowboys, you can't really say much till they start beating good teams. But the Tilapias will get fried this weekend. And the, the Eagles will be, the Eagles I'll make a shirt for you. Says my the Eagles will Tilapias. be eating some fish this fucking weekend, dog. I'll tell you that much. At 8 p.m., they're going to be eating. Now, before I give you guys the number one play that I have, I'm only going to take one NFL play this weekend. Just because what I told you guys earlier, got to be smart with how you're doing this, how you're investing. If you're not feeling it, if things aren't going too well, why slam three, three games? Does that make sense to you guys? 
I hope it does because a lot of you guys message me and do the opposite. You guys are losing, losing, losing and Sunday comes along and you're taking five fucking plays with a parlay and then at night you're chasing to make back everything you lost that day and then you're in the hole and then Monday comes along and you expect to bounce back on Monday in that week when you're feeling like shit for what you did the day before. Come on, man. Don't be stupid, man. Be smart. That's not how you win in this industry and it's never going to happen like that. A couple leans that I'm liking, especially after last week, we did take Tampa Bay. We did lose that play and something I did notice big time was Baker number one how he was throwing they could have won that game Baker just missed some throws he missed two or three throws that would have been touchdowns is it Baker or is it the protection they were getting to him pretty fast and not giving him the time he needed that makes me question things a game where both teams that are facing each other Atlanta and Tampa Bay have been struggling to put up points so has Atlanta plus two and a half minus two and a half I wouldn't take Tampa Bay at this point I would lean towards taking the Falcons as an upset spot in this game, but it's something I'm looking at right now. I do see a bright future in the Falcons. They're a young, studdish team that can build to become something. I don't know if you guys have seen the rumors that Sanders' son might be going there next year, but with that said, that's going to be interesting if that does happen. But that's the game that I'm leaning on. The other game I'm leaning on is the... Oh, this one's going to fucking blow everybody's mind. But this weekend will be the second game the Giants win. Yeah, this weekend will be the second game the Giants win. I'm calling it here, guys. The Giants, I would take them spread plus three against Washington. But what I saw last week, I wasn't too mad at. They did fuck up hard. They could have won that game out. And there's little improvements that you're seeing from the Giants. They're still a shit team. They're not going to do anything. But now you're facing a commander's team that their defense is great. Their offense is spotty. They got a rookie quarterback. I like my chances taking New York at home. But that's not my play. Those were just two leans that I was looking at. I got to evaluate them a bit further. Now, the game that I am looking at, and it's one that girls are going to love because Taylor Swift is dating oh, Kelsey. Yeah. I think Taylor Swift's going to be there singing a song at halftime. So I'm excited, man. I'm excited. <laughs> Taylor Swift, I'm a big fucking fan of that lady. Dude, it's so annoying how it's all about that lady now. Fuck. But yeah, guys, Kansas City, Chargers. This is a matchup that I love. I love the Chargers plus five and a half after a beat down last week that they could have won. The Chargers are a great team, guys. They just are not clicking. They're allowing big plays, which kind of goes against with what I'm picking because Kansas can create big plays out of nowhere. But this is a game where Herbert steps up, in my opinion. Herbert steps up, has the game of the year for him, for them. I could see them winning this outright. The Chargers have given the uh, Chiefs a fight. Run for their money. Let's run for their money, dog. There you go. A run for their money. I like them plus five and a half. I want to see if that line pushes up to six. I'm hoping it does. I could see it pushing up to six. I was a little shocked it opened at five and a half. I thought it was going to open up at six, which gives me more of a lean towards the Chargers. But it's a game where I can consider buying a point or half a point if it hits the six, six and a half to seven, because I can see it ending that way. That game ends by a uh, touchdown or less. Chargers come in. They're going to play well. They need to win this game. This game is more important for them than it is for Kansas City. And I think yep. you guys can all agree. They're a team that was expected to do big things. They are not doing big things. They're two and three. Going two and four will be big time. Going three and three can be a game changer. I'm a little sad that Burrow's not playing this week because that's a train that you guys should start riding. If you guys like patterns, if you guys like history, they did the same thing last year. They started like shit and then they ended up covering nine or 10 straight games. Those are the plays. Chargers are my plays. And then the Ohio State games, that's the main play so far. If you're not in my Telegram, join that fucking Telegram because I'm going to post more plays. And my boy right here is going to give you some player props. Hopefully it's not Tua scoring or Tyreek Hill. I know when you say that Chargers play, you fucking love Herbert over Tua. But this week I agree. So I have it here on my notes. I have uh, Herbert bouncing back against the Chiefs through that last minute interception last week. I couldn't believe it. I was going to be top scorer in my fantasy league. Lost 50 bucks because of him. Herbert, I hope you come back. Another crazy take. Not so crazy. I think Jacoby Myers is going to score more points than Devontae Adams. I think... They're not feeding Devontae, and it's... How about that? How about yeah, that? I don't know if you saw his comments today, but he's not happy with his reduced role. So that's going to be interesting to watch. The Jonathan Taylor and Zach Moss show. I think Jonathan Taylor continues to struggle and, and trying to get his footing back. He's gone for a while, comes back. I like James Cook bouncing back versus the New England Patriots. They fucking suck. Mari Cooper versus Indy. I think that's a great matchup for him. I'm not sure if Watson's playing or not, but I still think Mari Cooper can go off here. And then I'm excited to see Aaron Jones, man. Hamstring injury since week one. He said he's feeling 100%. Let's see what he's got against Denver, even though I do think Russell Wilson has a good game against the Packers.
They're due, man. I don't think they're as bad as their record shows them to be. But <laughs> Wilson needs to play better. Yeah. And just backing up what you're saying there, dude, the Patriots are terrible. Bro, incredible. I, I thought I'd never see the day, bro, as a Dolphins fan. <laughs> but they're that bad because they haven't let go of Mac Jones, man. I don't know if you saw him last week, but one of the interceptions he threw, bro. Bro, I think that, even Tony Robo said I, I think it was that, fucking that horrendous. Game, Tony Robo was like live. He said he was like that was a horrendous pass. He was running. Henry was wide open. He was right behind him, and it was a fucking interception. And he's been doing that all season, man. You gotta cut the fat, man. You gotta give up on nah. that. You're one in five. That's, Your season's pretty much done point. for. Oh, that's some miraculous shit. Yeah, this shit's done. Yeah, but yeah. If you're still betting on them, God, God be with you because I saw that bad beat last week. I think that it was like plus three. They ended up losing by four because of that fucking safety. That's you why I stopped the, taking that, man, because they are the quote-unquote sharp play. And you guys want more information here. They're the quote-unquote sharp play here, too, against the Bills. So sharp plays would be that one. Bears would be a sharp play. Let me give you guys one more. The Steelers, plus three. Something I'm noticing big time this season with NFL is that a lot of the favorites are winning, guys. A lot of them. A lot of them. And I told you guys this last week, and I should have listened to myself because nope. two undefeated teams went down. Two. They got back. Now, is this week going to be another week where Vegas eats or the favorites wins? If you guys analyze it like that, you guys will start seeing trends because typically each week, Either the house is winning or the favorites are winning. And over the long run, the house wins. So those are little things to keep in mind when you're betting, right? It's not always about emotion. I fucking like the Dolphins. The Dolphins are my favorite team or the Eagles, whatever. You know what I mean? You bet them because you love them. But in reality, there's a science behind this. There's huge science behind this. All these casinos hire Harvard, MIT, PhD motherfuckers that are 10 times smarter than all of you guys and me. Probably, unless you guys went to Harvard. If you guys took offense to that, stop watching the fucking show. It's be smart with your investments, guys. Be smart. I've been doing this for a long time, and I'll tell you one thing, man. Discipline, consistency, win, wins long term. That's the key to success in this. You got anything else, Salim? That's it, man. Just uh, for the guys to take advantage of the free Telegram, you're posting two to three plays minimum. So you've been actually posting a lot more, uh, which is awesome. Yeah. So if you're not in there, bro, you're fucking sleeping. And one last thing before I let you guys go, I will have a course soon on how to make plays, how to pick plays, how to find trends, what I look for, what I don't look for, and give you guys an edge on what you guys should be looking for if you guys aren't paying for plays and you guys want to do it yourself. At least have some sort of knowledge of what you're doing. If not, you're just gambling and guessing. So I'll have more information on that this coming week, if not next episode. And that's about it, guys. Invest, don't gamble. That's how you win in this game, and that's how you win in any investment. Thinking long-term, investing, and not being a degenerate. If you guys like the show, please share it, and I'll catch you guys next week. Salud.